One more customer, this one from the media and entertainment industry. The customer is Lightstorm, and Lightstorm's using digital technology in a way that was impossible a few years ago. And literally, they're changing the way that movies are being made. And so I'd like to invite John Landau to join us on stage. John partnered with jo James Cameron to produce Titanic, one of the most successful films of all time. This Academy Award-winning film broke new ground in using visual effects as a storytelling device. And Lightstorm has just wrapped production on their latest project, Avatar, shot entirely in stereoscopic 3D. The film opens later this month. So please join me in welcoming Academy Award winner and executive producer of Avatar, John Landau. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. And uh, one reason is when we look at Avatar, and we're very excited to be able to share Avatar with the world later this month, Avatar would not be possible but for Autodesk. It made the impossible possible. And for that, Jim and I are eternally grateful. So thank you very much. As we look at what we do, there's, there's other things that I thought of when, when Carl was talking. When you talk about digital prototyping, we were doing all of our live action filming down in New Zealand. Jim Cameron didn't have the time in our schedule to get there in advance of the production. So we built our sets virtually. We actually put actors in those environments through performance capture and walked them through the environments. And we made decisions about how to build the sets, how long they should be, where the actor would come in and put something down. And I think those are the type of things that don't just apply to the entertainment industry, but apply to many of the things that you do out in your fields. Later on today, I'm going to be sharing actual footage from the movie and talking a little bit more in depth about the film. But for right now, I'd like to share with you a little clip of a little bit of the behind the scenes that shows some of the Autodesk software at work. Here we go. Vocap ready. And action. This is not an animated film. It's captured performance. This is the first time that real-time performance capture has been employed in a direct filmmaking sense. This whole system has been set up to allow Jim, as a director, to walk onto the stage as if it were a live-action stage, pick up the camera, see his actors, see his characters, see his world. Prior to this, on other performance-captured or motion-captured films, there's no relationship between the actors and the camera. The difference here is we can show in real time what that relationship is. One of the ways we did that was by coming up with this virtual camera technology that allowed us to see in real time what was being shot in the performance captured stage. Let's dance. The virtual camera was used at three important stages. Initially, it was used to just look around in the scene. That's where we actually art directed the movie. And then we'd bring in the actors and I'd use the virtual camera to block the scene with them, exactly like a director would use their viewfinder. When Jim picks up that camera and he looks at the actor who's standing there right in front of him, what he sees is their CGI character. And when he moves the camera around the stage, what he sees is the world that that character is supposed to be standing in. Jim probably has more flexibility on the virtual production stage than he would have during a live action shoot. Sweet. And then the third stage, I'm working with those captured performances to shoot all the cameras for all the scenes. The virtual camera doesn't have a lens in the traditional sense. It's all created virtually in the computer. We're using our performance capture system to track this position as though it were a camera view into that world. And the camera could do anything. It could be a crane, it could be a steady cam, it could be all just purely handheld. And it all reacts the way you'd expect camera to react in real life. As a result, you're getting great camera work that doesn't feel computer generated. It feels very alive and lifelike. Yeah. It's basically as close to live action as one can get in a CG invented world. The cool part is we can show the actors exactly what it's going to look like compositionally. We can show them what they look like. You walk out here in the suit and all of a sudden I'm a nine foot tall blue alien. You move differently. You know how to perform. You're watching yourself and the motion capture illusion that they created in a computer at the same time. Wow. 
even though I'm big nine foot tall and blue, it's got my personality. Yeah! That's quite spectacular that a computer generated image can do that. That really surprised me. The door has just barely been opened on what's possible with this. Think fly! Fly? So that's a little look at the behind the scenes in Avatar. We're not the only ones doing this in the film industry. Early on, Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson came to our stage, and we lent them our stage. We gave them our cameras, we gave them our tools, we gave them our motion builder software, and they worked with it. Coming out of that experience, they decided to make their next movie, a joint venture called Tintin, using this same technology. So I think we are going to continue as an industry to build upon the foundation that we've created here. Because what I really believe is that oftentimes, technology is a limiting factor. What we were able to do with the Autodesk software is to make technology an enabling e essence. And we were able to do a movie that we could not otherwise do. I hope to see all of you this afternoon when we'll share some scenes from the movie and again, a d deeper look into the behind the scenes. Thank you very much.